I have a personal motto that evolution is better than revolution. Revolutions might start off well, but they can be very messy. It is better for a society to evolve over a long period of time. For example, in the United States, only white males could vote in 1776. It would not be until 1920 that women would be given the right to vote. But we have a much more stable democracy in the United States than other countries that have these revolutions. On June the 10th, 1789, the third estate invited the first two estates to form a common assembly or risk the third estate going alone. They failed in this attempt and were locked out of their meeting hall after they declared themselves the National Assembly on June 17th. On June 20th, they met on the King's Tennis Court at Versailles and agreed not to separate until a new constitution was developed. The majority of the clergy and 47 members of the nobility joined them. The king called for the military, but other regional assemblies approved of the third estate's revolutionary ideals. The remainder of the nobility of the second estate did not want these proposed reforms and backed the king to use military force against the new assembly. Louis XVI fired Jacques Necker, his main advisor, who wanted reforms with a conservative. Many Parisians feared imminent military action and took to the streets. On July 14, 1789, 900 Parisians assembled at the Bastille. The Bastille was a prison for political prisoners. Marquis Bernard de Lanay had ordered his troops to fire into the crowd, killing almost 100. After four hours of combat, the insurgents seized Lanay and several of his guards. Although the Parisians released only seven prisoners, four forgers, two lunatics, and a dangerous sexual offender, the Bastille served as a potent symbol of everything hated under the ancient regime. The crowd moved to the city hall and also killed the mayor of Paris, Jacques de Plessé. The peasants in the countryside also began to attack the property of the nobility, and finally the nobility decided to the necessary reforms. On August the 4th, 1789, the National Assembly abolished feudalism, the end of tithes to the church, and the nobility surrendered their special privileges against the peasantry. On August 26th, they adopted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. These were the rights espoused by the Enlightenment philosophers. In 1790, the National Assembly passes the Civil Constitution of the Clergy, it reorganized the church diocese into larger areas and reduced the number of bishops and priests. Also, the clergy became part of the government and were elected by the people. The Pope did not recognize this action, which helped to divide many reform-minded Catholics that the assembly was going too far. In 1791, they wrote a new French constitution. The king would be a limited monarch like Great Britain, and the people would be represented by a unicameral legislature, the National Assembly. There was also judicial reform. The National Assembly voted to improve the court system. Torture and excessive punishment were abolished. Judges were selected by merit rather than political patronage. Finally, business reform. Tariffs within France were abolished to spread the sale of goods, as well as the guild system. Free market capitalism and competition, which lowered prices. So, so far, so good. It looks like the French Revolution is getting off to a solid start and helping the common man. However, a radical stage occurs between 1792 and 1794. Many conservatives, the nobility, clergy, and French Catholics that did not accept the civil constitution led a counter-revolution. The urban poor, the sans-culottes, did not obtain significant gains either. They were opposed to the wealthy class and wanted more socialism and equality of pay. The bourgeoisie did not extend the right to vote to the poor, and these groups wanted the same equalities. In June of 1791, Louis XVI and his family attempted to flee France, but were caught at Varennes and sent back to Paris as prisoners. By this time, the National Assembly started to faction. On April 20, 1792, the National Assembly declares war against Austria. Prussia joins Austria and quickly sends troops inside 
France. Other areas rise in revolt against the assembly. The Parisians panicked and abolished the monarchy and established a full republic. In January of 1793, Louis XVI is beheaded. His wife would be beheaded a few months later. The French, reinvigorated, went on an offensive against the foreign forces and captured Belgium, the Rhineland, Nice, and Savoy. The other European powers were threatened by these implications and with Britain helped unite against France. In June of 1793, the Jacobins became the dominant faction in the National Assembly. They agreed to price supports, which gave them the support of the Parisian Sanskulots. 80,000 Parisians surrounded the assembly and arrested all the Girondist delegates. The Committee of Public Safety, which were 12 men, became the executive department of the assembly. They had the real power. And in 1793, a new constitution was created, gave the French the right to vote to all adult males, abolished slavery in the French colonies, and free education. Clearly, the ideas in the Enlightenment plus the sans culottes were part of this new constitution. But the constitution was never put into effect due to war with other European countries, but its implication was understood. The assembly passed the law of the maximum. Food prices were fixed and the poor could buy the lands of French emigres for a low price to propel food production. The Jacobins also conscripted an army. All adult males between 18 and 25 should fight for the love of their country, la patrie. This brought a force of 800,000 to the field and rallied behind the words of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The French would retake Belgium. Robespierre was a devout Republican. However, during times of foreign and civil war, man's thoughts can be clouded by suspicion very similar to the period of McCarthyism or the Salem Witch Trials. The Jacobins attacked all of its former allies through the Reign of Terror. 500,000 were imprisoned, with a total of 36,000 executed and another 200,000 killed in the civil conflict. Robespierre was ultimately successful at evicting the foreign enemies and his internal critics, but now that he won, the French wanted him to loosen his reign of power. On July 28, 1794, Robespierre himself was guillotined. A new group came to power, the Thermidorians. They were property-owning bourgeoisie, more sympathetic to the first Constitution of 1791. They voided the Constitution of 1793 against the sans-culottes and the law of the maximum. So now they're taking the rights away from the poor urban people, the sans culottes. So they're not going to be happy with that. A new constitution of 1795 reenacted property requirements for voting and the directory became the new executive government of the Thermidorians. A new bicameral legislature was approved. Bicameral means two houses, as well as an executive department of five directors. Catholics now began to murder Jacobins. These actions and uprisings by sans culottes forced the generals to take control of the directory and Napoleon Bonaparte would be brought into the government. So due to all this civil conflict, the French needed a strong dictator to take reins of power to try to develop a way to bring the French people back together again.